Hello, and welcome to Tuning In, Tuning Up. We have been inviting people in the music industry to share their listening tips. These conversations are companions to our Wednesday Noon Hour series. I'm Lori Townsend from the UBC School of Music, and I'm here with Jose Frank Ballester, a professor at the School of Music teaching clarinet and chamber music. He's from Spain originally and enjoys a stellar career performing in many parts of the world. During COVID, unable to travel, Jose has been creating videos in his living room and touching hundreds of thousands of people around the world with music through the internet. His performances are stunningly beautiful. Jose embodies the music, bringing the composer's ideas to life and touching audiences deeply. We're so fortunate to have you here teaching and performing at UBC. Welcome, Jose. Thank you, Laurie. So Jose, the clarinet can produce so many different sonorities, dynamic range and pitch flexibility. One example I'm thinking of is Gershwin's uh, The Introduction to the Rhapsody in Blue mm -hmm. with the glissando, um, all created with the vibration of a single wide flat reed magnified by the, the rest of the instrument. So what's going on that you want people to hear and pay attention to when they hear a clarinet? Sure, the, the clarinet is, a, is an instrument that is very close to the human voice. When I was a student at the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia, my teacher, Donald Montanaro, would say to me, Jose, the clarinet is an extension of your voice, not only an instrument. It's an extension of your voice, and uh, and especially in a program like uh, uh, the coming up program at, at UBC, the repertoire we got a lot of romantic music, but also we got a piece by Chan Kanin, and so the clarinet as the voice could imitate sounds and way of singing from different parts of the world. When and sometimes I like doing this kind of creating a program where there is a lot of different styles because the, the clarinet works very well in jazz, as you mentioned with the Rhapsody in Blue, which that opening solo, uh, the original band that performed it, the clarinet player, he was a Jewish uh, player, he played in a Jewish band, and originally Gershwin wrote that scale as a scale, not as a glissando. And he wanted to make it more like klezmerish. And, and that's what happened. And that's how it stayed forever. And it's an iconic solo. So uh, clarinet, you, you got that sound of jazz, got the sound of klezmer, got the sound of Balkan music, Arab music, uh, uh, South American music. They use a lot of clarinet all kinds of European and worldwide folk music, and of course, classical romantic music. And the clarinet changes. It changes timbre, it changes vibrato, how we sing, and also changes the different effects that you use for different types of music. Like for instance, this, this coming Wednesday, when with uh, the piece by, by Chen Kenin Among Friends, which he has a lot of bendings. He uses the clarinet, like if you're bending a string instrument and gets that those kind of glissandos going up, that it makes the, the clarinet sound like ethnic, like another instrument. And that's pretty cool. And it's very cool for me to experiment as well. So when I'm doing a concert like this one, I just wanna, I, I want the audience to be amazed by what we can do with the clarinet, how we can use the clarinet as an extension of, of our own voice, of my own voice, and, and, and transport you to different cultures. That sounds really cool. So when you're playing, um, you play a lot of chamber music. And mm -hmm. uh, one thing I'm thinking of also is like the Mozart and Brahms uh, quintets where you're playing with strings. And this, concert you're playing with cello and piano. Mm -hmm. um, how are you thinking in the chamber music setting? And how what is it you're listening for when you're with these musical partners? And is it different when you're playing in a mixed chamber music setting, as opposed to 
with string quartet or with wind quartet or something more uh, similar? Yeah, that's a great question. To me, it all takes the same because we are playing with different voices and it's about listening, blending and adjusting. And there is nothing, never like a set thing. You need to always to, to adapting, to adapt everything. I always use a, uh, an analogy for chamber music. Chamber music is like dancing. When you have a partner and you need to know your steps and what you're going to do, but also you are so sensitive to any kind of movement and the gesture that the, the partner is doing and you have to react to that mm -hmm. and you have to support that partner and that partner has to support you that's the beauty of chamber music that's something so unique because even with a piece like Mozart quintet or Brahms quintet when I play with quartets professional quartets every time is different mm -hmm. every time you are micro adjusting uh, everything that you are doing that micro adjustment could be intensity emotional intensity it could be dynamics it could be texture it could be an atmosphere that you're creating something is cooking all the time and i like using that word cooking cooking because a good chef is not a chef that has like a set recipe right it's like someone who who is going to depend on many factors and that's the 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 magic part of chamber music that's why i'm so passionate about chamber music because it allows you to do that i don't want the, my chamber music partners to tell me what they want i want them to start doing it and i match them and i do it so what and there is a it's a private conversation yeah. that we're having about decisions without actually talking just by playing so what kinds of things are you doing to adjust and and in these in these conversations what kinds of things are you doing or what are you listening for from them well tempo could be very flexible maybe uh, in this concert look on the brahms trio decides to take a little bit time between one note to the other and that's something that's happening in that moment and is genuine and instead of me being wanted to be like a metronome i'm just listening to that little gesture and i'm matching with him like right away it's like in a way you're connected to 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 them mm -hmm. or maybe uh, jane coop uh, uh, with her fantastic and, and uh, magical playing she transforms a phrase in that moment and creates like a beautiful diminuendo and something happens and I'm just like I go with that flow that is happening on the on the on the moment that's the beauty of the beauty of chamber music not the things that you only decide on on rehearsals but the things that they are constantly happening and you are in tune you're tuning like a radio to that frequency that each musician is is, is playing and that's that's what great chamber music is to me. Thank you. Um, so when you are mm. attending concerts and you're listening, or maybe you can describe um, concerts that you have attended that have touched you, changed your life, maybe. Um, um, some uh, Have you had an experience that has been one of those moments that made you change how you think about music, wanting to play music, or it just you know took your breath away. Constantly, Lori, constantly. The because I'm always seeking for those moments on on live concerts, recordings, uh, anytime. We are uh, like curious. That curiosity, you're like a sponge looking for that, right? I want to be that kind of musician. And I had so many, so many concerts that they had influenced me. And it's like, this is like life. This is like a, this is like a smoothie where you start adding ingredients, like emotional experiences that you're living 
through those experiences and you put them together. And that's when you play one note, whatever comes is that an infusion of, of what's happened to you in the past, of those experiences that you're mentioning on the, on the past. Uh, what would you uh, invite people to do when they are listening? When I'm listening, I want the music to take me to places. So I'm sensitive about trying to get into that intensity or those spaces, emotional spaces that the musicians are trying to create when they are performing. And this concert has a lot of it. Because when we have Brahms trio, which every four seconds, something new is happening emotionally. It's like a, it's a voyage. It's, it's, in, it's, in, it's overwhelming. It's incredible. And uh, then you got uh, Bruch, the two pieces that they are so profound and, and deep and, and genuine and beautiful of pieces that a composer wrote for, for his son. And, and uh, I like, then we have the, the, the Among Friends by Chan Kanin with it's a wild piece. It's crazy, but it's also beautiful. It's an incredible piece. I'm so happy we are pre performing that, that piece. The type of sounds that the ensemble is going to be able to create are incredible as a contrast with, with Bruch and Brahms. But one of the things I will say to the audience is like, listen in Bruch all the times that one melody is introduced by the cello. Then the clarinet plays that melody. And always at the end, both of the instruments are unison. And when both of us are unison, that's where I was talk, telling you the timing, the, what we are doing, that's beautiful to listen to and how it's happening. It happens in Brahms a lot. It happens a lot of conversation and how that conversation is evolving all the, all, all the time. So there are so many things to, to look at a, at, a, at a concert. Some people, they have a kick just watching the fingers of the musicians. And they, like, like a concert experience, you shape it on your own. And, and every time is, is, is unique. So just go, I would suggest to go to an, a concert with a blank page and be receptive and, and be able to, to, to dig in and listen and to see how you're reacting, to see how your body is reacting, to see how your mind is wandering while you're listening to the music as, as well. Ah. To see how it's affecting your, your moods, your feelings. It's like all of that are, are part of, 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 of going to, to, to a concert. In this case, it's going to be an online concert with a good uh, computer monitor, good headphones or speakers and enjoy it. Oh, thank you, Jose. You've, you've got me hungry for this as we were talking about smoothies and everything <laughs> that's just so what music is and how it touches. And, and so um, I'll come with open ears and an open heart too for this concert. So thank you. Thank you so much for this time and thank you for chatting. My pleasure. And to everyone who's been watching, thank you for tuning in. Until next time. <laughs>